All right, so I wanted to make a quick video on this uh, 2000 Bear Tracker 250 I picked up mm, about three weeks ago, maybe a month. Now, the best part about this thing is I paid 300 bucks for it. So, it was not supposed to run when I bought it. Just for the heck of it, when I brought it home, I decided to pull the choke out, turn the gas on, and uh, pull the cord, see if it would fire. And sure enough, it ran. It ran like garbage, but it ran. So I kind of rode around for a bit and I checked the oil and it was a nice green color. Pretty much all I've done to this guy is change the oil two or three times, change the filters and uh, kind of got it back to that nice clean golden color. And through running uh, probably two tanks of gas through this thing, uh, it has just progressively ran better and better. I put I did put an air filter in it. That was ten dollars. So I'm in this thing like three hundred ten bucks. With that being said, it's still not perfect. Obviously, there is still an issue with the carb. You can kind of see where it's just got a little bit of a drip. Uh, sometimes it does it worse than others. Uh, obviously, our pet cock was bad also, so we'll replace that. But the needle and seat are either leaking or the float just needs to be adjusted uh, we'll take care of both of them i've got a rebuild kit for the carb uh, a couple other odds and ends for this thing yeah so just testing the petcock there we've got that switched on that switched off that is no good for sure Oh well, yeah, just a bit of uh, dirt and stuff in the bottom. It's no surprise it ran all right. Uh, yeah, our, you can see the tab on the float there is bent way up. It's no wonder it leaks out so bad. Here's our rebuild kit. It's just kind of a cheap one from eBay. And I'm noticing right off the bat that the supplied O-ring is probably not going to work. That's not right. And now, because this carb isn't really bad at all, I'm not really going to go into some in-depth cleaning. Uh, I'm going to replace a couple pieces like the idle screw here, uh, just kind of for visual improvements, I guess. Uh, and I'll probably go ahead and replace the needle. Uh, if the seat looks okay, I'll leave it. Right, let's pull it and see. Yeah. You can't really see it, but the seat ain't really corroded or anything up in there. So, Well, this is kind of unfortunate. I got a little ripped off with this rebuild kit. But you can kind of tell the factory one is on top and then the rebuild kit's on the bottom. Factory's a little taller. Let's hope that it's just the uh, float height that's causing that problem. I have a feeling it probably is. So a way that I usually just test the needle and seat is, um, you know, kind of gently let the float rest, open it and let it rest, and then just blow on the intake here. And if it holds, it's probably fine. So in this case, uh, we're in pretty good shape. I'll pull the jets out and just clean it real good. Well, good news, the O-ring ended up fitting perfect, so that's all right. Uh, we got the bowl kind of cleaned up, all that dirt and stuff out of there. I was also able to locate uh, an extra hose clamp I had laying around. This is the correct style. This is the thing that was on there. It's the next day here. We've got some daylight. See our fuel's on. Our float is set correctly. It's no longer dripping out the bottom. So uh, 
let's get this thing started, let it warm up for a bit, and then we will adjust the idle. All right, so I've been messing with this thing for a little bit, trying to figure out why it's running rich. Um, so I just pulled this guy, the needle, out of here, and uh, this is how it came out. This is how it's actually supposed to be, so that probably had something to do with it. That was the culprit. All right, so another thing I've noticed kind of as I've rode this quad more is uh, we're leaking some oil. These seals leak all the time. So we'll get a seal ordered for that. And I'm also gonna get this tube because you see it cracked. And then this guy is not sitting in there like it should. See, it just kind of pops out and it's damaged. So we'll get those figured out as well. All right, so we got some parts in. We got that seal and then the uh, airbox drain. So here's our new seal and uh, it looks the same on both sides. You see it's got the spring on uh, both sides of it. So don't think it matters which way it goes in. All right, so the old seal did come out with the letters facing uh, inside the crankcase. Uh, I don't really think it matters, but we'll install it that way anyways. And then this is a inch and one eight socket. This is another thing people always manage to lose and just for some reason don't think is important, which I guess technically it's not if you don't see any puddles or any water at all. But for me, I always make sure that each of my four wheelers has one of these on it. All right, so let's give this thing a test ride. We changed the seal, got the airbox drain fixed and went through the carb. I checked the engine oil. We've been through the differential already, uh, kind of when I bought it. So uh, let's see how this thing runs. Looks like this thing's running pretty good. All right, so last thing we're gonna do on this quad is uh, some sort of cosmetic stuff. So obviously the fenders are kind of faded. We'll take care of that in a minute. But another thing I really kind of disliked about it was how someone has painted the engine black at some point. Some of it's coming off, some of it's not. 
So, I figured I'd try a couple methods. On this side, I'm using brake clean. As you can see, it actually did start pulling some paint up there. And on this side of the motor, I'm using like citrus strip, paint stripper. So uh, we'll give this like 30 minutes and uh, see if it works. All right, so I think that gives us our answer here. This was the side with the paint stripper and it did take most of it off. And I didn't even let it set for the full 30 minutes. And now this is with brake clean. You see, we got some stuff off, but not quite everything. Here's paint stripper again. It did a lot on this. This was completely black. And then brake clean again. This one was already kind of coming off. It did take a good bit off up here. But uh, obviously this would be kind of a long process. It's not really something I feel like doing all right now. Uh, just cause I'm not gonna get it perfect anyways. This quad is not meant to be perfect. Uh, it's a cheap beater, I guess. I'll just kind of throw a paint stripper on it every time I wash this thing and uh, slowly get that fixed up. So we're using purple power. And then I think it's triple zero or four zero, the finest steel wool you can get. And I'm also wearing some gloves because that purple power, that purple power will dry out your hands pretty badly. All right, so I got a pretty big spot covered there. Oh yeah, look at that. So here's our results next day. <clears throat> it looks a little lighter on camera than it actually is. We may have to go and touch up some areas like that. So I actually am out of uh, paint thinner right now, but I do have this boiled linseed oil. Now I've got some on a rag. This stuff is kind of thick. Uh, that's probably what the paint thinner is for, is just kind of thin it out. But I think the goal here is just get this stuff on and I was told just let the plastics, let it dry, let the plastics absorb it, and then kind of wash it off. Which, that really does bring back the shine pretty well. So here are the results after wiping it down with that. It looks pretty dang good. Now, obviously, it's still wet. I was told let this dry in for a couple hours, let the plastic absorb it, and then we'll wash off the excess. And I'll probably use soapy water and stuff because I don't want this to be like the method where you just spray WD-40 on it and say it's cleaned up. Obviously, as soon as the WD-40 washes away, it looks like it did before. The problem with the oil staying on there for, well, forever without washing it, is that as soon as you go playing the dust and the dirt down there, it sticks to the fenders and it stains the fenders and it just looks like crap. I'd rather have a bit of a darker color with no shine on it, uh, on a four-wheeler at least, where it's not going to catch all that dirt and dust every time I go ride and then it's a pain in the butt to wash off. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. This quad's running good now. It looks pretty decent with all the racks painted up. We're going to leave the wheels how they are for now because uh, I'm going to get some different tires for the rear. Um, and I'm still waiting on this petcock to get in. I did order it a while back as well as this breather hose and this. I think... USPS may have lost it or something so 
I'm not going to wait around on that. It works fine as it is for now. So really happy with how it turned out for 400 bucks. I think I have into this thing now. So you really can't beat it. This thing will have plenty of life left for me to just have fun on and use it around for different stuff. So that's it for this one. Stay tuned for more content.